Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, this is Sally right here, and of course the star Shackleton. The only way I could get Sally to appear is with a little bit of uh, food, and uh, Shackleton is very perturbed because he usually steals the limelight, but, uh, you know, he's got comp company now. And, uh, you know, it's funny, it's got to the point where, where Shackleton actually can sit on the chair in the office and start meowing. He wants to... He wants the uh, attention that he gets uh, from being in a YouTube video. So anyway, uh, enough about cats. Today I'm going to talk all about marine heat waves. A report just came out by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change on the threats that are facing our oceans. And I'll cover that report in detail. I'll show you the links to it. But before I do that, before I get into coverage of that, I really want to talk about these marine heat waves. So I'll get right into it. So basically, let me adjust my camera. I'm a bit too low. Okay, so back in 2014, you might recall the blob. Okay, so off of the western coast of North America, off Alaska, Canada, and the U.S., we had this marine heat wave, very persistent marine heat wave. And one of the effects was, or, or causes was the jet stream was extremely wavy coming north and it brought tremendous amounts of heat and uh, basically heated up the water, waters down to uh, great depths. So it wasn't just uh, sea surface temperature. This is showing sea surface temperature of the blob you know, back when it started to form around in, in September 2014. And of course, it persisted for quite a while. This is what we have right now in, in September 2019. So the distribution of the heat is slightly different. It's more concentrated here and up along the coasts, And there's a big sort of gap here. But what we're seeing so far is that the heat hasn't extended that deep down into the ocean. So if this feature persists, then the waters deeper down, not just at the surface, down to several hundred meters will, will warm up significantly. So the question is, you know, do we have blog, blog, blob 2.0? Um, okay, or is it just something that is, looks like it's forming but won't persist? So I just want to remind you about my website, paulbeckwith.net. I think the cats are about to fight here. And uh, I just posted, um, I, had, I had the great David Korn post uh, Greta Thunberg's full speech to the world leaders at the, at the UN uh, Climate Sum Action Summit. So they actually crossed paths, uh, or at least they were, they were in the same room, and here's Greta and here's, here's uh, this guy. And she's not very happy. Okay, but I mean, the speech is just phenomenal. It's incredible. Um, it's something, you know, if I recommended one video, one thing for you to see um, this year, it would have to be uh, her full speech to the world leaders. And David's also put the transcript here to her, her full speech, her words. Okay, so go to paulbeckwith.net and have a look. And please remember to, um, please remember to subscribe to this website so that whenever I post videos and stuff, you can get a message saying that new stuff has been posted. I also like to, um, I haven't done too many videos in the last week because I've been doing, all, I've been focusing on, on, on contacting all of the people that have donated to me in the last year or so because this work would not be possible without your support. So please consider going to PayPal and and donating there. You can do it on a monthly basis even. I have people that, you know, are donating basically a dollar a month. And one of the things that is, you know, any amount helps. I mean, I, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, one of the things um, is that I do respond to all people that, that donate. It's not, I'm trying to work on having it more prompt because um, I'm not the greatest, you know, I spent a lot of time working and doing, studying climate change and doing
doing videos and uh, I don't spend, um, you know, at the expense of time on emails and, and, and being propped with emails, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to improve that. One of the things is if you do set up a donation, even a dollar a month, when I respond and thank you, you have my email and, you know, usually I have ongoing discussions with people over many, many years, you know, and uh, can answer your, your individual climate change questions, et cetera, by, uh, by that, uh, that method. Like I say, I'm, I'm improving, I'm, I'm working on improving my, my, my email. So let's get right into marine heat waves. So this is the Physical Sciences Division, ESRL. So if you Google esrl.noaa.gov, look at the ocean um, sea surface temperatures. Okay, they have all these updated maps. This is valid as of September 24th, which was yesterday. So we've got sea surface temperatures, we've got the anomalies, and there's lots of data. So let's talk about what's happening right now in the ocean. So this is the daily sea surface temperature anomaly. You can see the scale here. Okay, we go up to, so the red here is, you know, orange is 2.5 to three. The reds are anything, anything over three is red. You know, the deeper the red, the hotter the sea surface temperature. And then you, you have the global map and you can see this huge extensive blob here um, we're not in an El Nino. In fact, the water is a bit cooler here. Um, so it's, it's not a La Nina either. You know, it's sort of neutral, but it's not, it's certainly not close to an El Nino. But we've got this very, very warm water in this region, which is indicative of the blob previously. And if the jet stream is kind of stuck up here, like this in a ridge, then underneath the ridge is the heat that can heat the water. You know, and if it's sitting there over a long period of time, then the water gets warmer and warmer and warmer, deeper and deeper down, and we get a significant repeat of the blob here. Okay, um, if we look at the actual sea surface temperature, not the anomaly, what you can see here is, you know, you can see for very, very warm water here, 30 degrees plus, it's like a sauna in these regions here with the dark purple. And then as you go away from the um, equator, you get the, the water temperature drops. Okay, but still the reds are, you know, over 28 degrees Celsius. The orange is over 26. And you can see right up here that the water is cooling down in this region, but the anomaly, it's much warmer than it normally is. You can clearly see that from the anomaly. You can't see it so much from the actual absolute temperatures. If we look at the weekly sea surface temperature anomaly averaged, then what, what you can see is, I'm not sure why. Um, okay, there we go. It's, uh, okay, so this is averaged over the week, September 15th to September 21st. Come on, cat, stop fighting. Um, so what you can see, speaking of yeah, anyway, it's okay. I'll just try to not let them distract me. Uh, what you can see is the warm water. You can clearly notice the extremely warm temperatures in the Arctic, around in the areas of open water around the sea ice. And of course, there's huge anomalies because there was ice there um, not too long ago. So the base period is 81 to 2010. There was ice there and now it's open water. So obviously the temperatures are a lot warmer up here on the fringes of the... Um, in the, in the open water around the sea ice, which had reached the minimum and is now starting to reform. And what you can see here is this really, you know, this really sticks out at you. So this is a weekly average of the sea surface temperature anomaly. And if you go to the, um, the absolute temperatures, you can see um, it's, it's harder to decipher, but you can see the really hot spots. And as you go up, I mean, even, you know, up here, um, the greens are, you know, 12 to 14 to 16 degrees Celsius. This is the monthly anomaly. So this is August 25th to September 21st. And you can see the areas where the heat is concentrated. So this blob, this return of the blob really sticks out um, in these images. And this is the 
absolute temperatures again. Um, and you get this again just by going back to the site and just clicking on these, you know, do a, do a refresh, make sure you get the latest, latest data, and then just clicking on all of these to get these images. Okay, there's also a seasonal um, anomaly. So this is from June 23rd to, um, to September 21st, and you can see the feature there strongly. Okay, and if we go, this is the um, seasonal average. This is the absolute temperatures, not the anomaly. Now we can go to, um, basically, this is a, an animation now. Okay, this is the daily sea surface temperature anomaly um, for the last week. And you can see how it does change from day to day. There is some uh, areas, there, there is some jug, jiggling of, of the uh, hottest areas, but you can see how it progresses on a weekly basis. We can get a longer term uh, basis. So this is, uh, this is basically a seasonal um, GIF or seasonal animation running from, okay, come on, kitty, kitty, down you got, come on, uh, running from 6.30, which is uh, June 30th, to, to the present. Okay, so you can see how the, um, the inner dynamics of the, of the heat in the ocean is, is changing. Um, but we have very, very, um, it's very, very warm in this region. Come on, Shaki, I know you, you love being on video. Okay, so you can see this. And again, it's from 6.30, June 30th to present. And then we can do, this is the yearly, I believe. So it's weekly sea surface temperature anomaly. Okay, so there it is appearing here. Okay, so it starts in September 2018. No signs of it really. Nothing really appears. And you can start seeing the, the hot water starting to pool around June, July of this year. Okay, so this is the way to see the feature, the growth of the feature. Now, this is uh, normalized sea surface temperature anomalies as a function of longitude. Um, and it's anomal an anomaly relative to the base period of 1981 to 2010. And these are for the years. So it's from, it's from January 1990 to July 2019. So what you can see here is you can see um, these very, the red is very, very, is two degrees Celsius anomalies. This is between three and a half north and 3.5 degrees latitude south. Okay, so, so bracketing the equator, and you can see the hot water here from the powerful El Nino in late 97, 98. Okay, you can now see a very, the very strong El Nino here from 2015, 2016. 2017, the very, very powerful El Nino, and you can see where we are now. So no El Nino is occurring, but we're getting that blob feature occurring. And if we go here, this is the Eastern Pacific sea surface temperature anomaly and the Western Pacific anomalies. This is a strong El Nino in 97, 98, the reds here. And this is the very extremely powerful El Nino Eastern Pacific, especially in the Eastern Pacific, look at the extremely powerful phenomena that happened in 2015, 2016, 2017. Okay, and here's where we are now. The water's starting to get warm in some of these regions, but it's nowhere near, you know, you can see the, the fluctuation as we go from El Nino to La Nina. Okay, so the key thing is that the... Um, the key thing is that it looks like we're reaching, um, you know, early stages of a, of a new blob, and this will have tremendous implications on sea life. 